Uh, the National Journal and Google brought us together today to try to explain to all of you why this election has really become a pop culture phenomenon. When you've got your children, you've got people all around the world who want their piece of this election, whether it's videos, blogging, user-generated videos, your own kids' video that you send in, or my favorite, Blogger Heads TV, because I can't get enough blogging heads, um, get together. Everyone wants a piece of this election. They've taken their, their piece. I would argue that they're going to demand even more as these, this election goes on and in future elections. But today, right now, we've gathered this group together because we think they can explain why it has become this way. So if we may begin, on the end there, we've got Baratunde Thurston. He's the web editor of The Onion. He's director of election coverage, which, by the way, they've named the war for the White House. He's affectionately known around the water cooler there at the Onion as Petraeus. There, Petraeus. Oh, we get that. <laughs> His training for this job included stand-up comedy and working for Verizon and AT&T. I'll leave that there. <laughs> Baratunde claims, by the way, that the Onion's reporting is even more honest than CNN. <laughs> Next to Baratunde is Zoe Stagg. She's here from Team Sugar. She began her journalism career writing for Veg News and Rachel Ray and working for candidates at all levels. But the job that most prepared her for a role as Citizen Sugar, driving a tour bus through Washington. And no, she never got to drive the DC Duck, so don't ask her after the program. <laughs> Zoe has endorsed John McCain, but she doesn't let her political views get in her way at Team Sugar, where they use celebrities to get into politics. She'll tell us all about that in a minute. Welcome, Zoe. And then next, Ben Rellis, sitting right next to her. He was looking for that one girl, like many ad men before him, one that would travel the globe because of their love and devotion to Jack Bauer. But instead, he found Obama girl and made her and himself the stars of this election. Liz Winstead, that's the English version, not Weinstead, as she corrected me earlier, created the, the Daily Show. Let's hear it for Liz. She deserves applause just for that. She, she proved to the world that young people do care about politics. She caused a lot of my friends in network news to lose their jobs, and I'm trying to forgive her for that. But that's not enough for her, because now she has Shoot the Messenger, where she makes fun of network news, morning network news now. Uh, every day, they perform it in New York, and then it's up on the web. Christopher Hitchens, best-selling author, agent provocateur, who's a fearless flogger of all ridiculous things, so we couldn't have this panel without him. How do you explain how my kids, people all across the country and the world are talking about this election, that it has become such a big event. I remember seeing um, James Baldwin. Remember James Baldwin? The older comrades will remember him. I'm maybe I'm here as the old guy for this panel. I don't know. But, um, anyway. I thought so you were going to a very, John very, McCain very, joke. Very, very, very celebrated, very brilliant gay African-American novelist of the 60s, mainly. Giovanni's Room, Another Country, The Fire Next Time. If Beale Street Could Talk, all his titles were brilliant too. And I saw him speak when I lived in London in the 60s at Central Hall Westminster, the biggest hall in London, huge rally for civil rights. And he said, having made this chilling, brilliant speech, he, he paused and he said to all the English people sitting there, he said, and just do you remember something, my brothers and my sisters, just do you remember, Richard Nixon is your president too. <laughs> and everyone in the hall went, Ugh! <laughs> at the realization it was true. And everyone really around the world secretly has always wanted one thing, a vote in American elections. That's it, and they Obama just want to vote? And sort of, Obama is, in a funny way, sort of promising them that. Another promise you won't be able to keep, among very many. Do you agree with that, Liz? Which part? The part about the rest of the world just wants to vote and have a piece of our action. That Christopher, as a young man growing up, wanted one thing to vote. Which, by the way, we should say, new to citizen voting <clears throat> this year for the first time. My fellow Americans. Yes. Wow. Thank you. That's Taking it. A long time. Thank you. Of course, your candidate pulled out, right? Uh, I voted absentee, and the guy was out before my vote was counted. But I don't care. And I, voted, <laughs> and I voted in DC where it doesn't count, and where we have taxation <laughs> without representation. And it was the worst welcome I could possibly have had to this great republic, but I was still full of uh, irrational pride. <laughs> Well, Liz, The Daily Show and a lot of the shows that everyone's involved with and websites are really, seem to really be bringing people into the process because it's at their level. Is that fair or is that just mainstream media blather? Well, I think mainstream media blather is why there is The Daily Show and Bill Maher. I mean, quite frankly, watch mainstream television and people who are hosting these shows and 
part of the reason it happened, you sort of joke that we're putting you guys out of business. I would say I wouldn't exist if it wasn't for how ridiculous mainstream media has become, especially on television. In what way, though? Well, here's the classic thing that is happening. Uh, when you watch te television news, on cable especially, um, I sit in my living room just as a citizen who writes jokes for a living, and I see the people asking the same questions I ask myself of what I've read in the paper. So basically, you have talking heads from <clears throat> 8 in the morning until 11 o'clock wondering aloud. And you should not get paid to wonder aloud on television. <laughs> and that is what they do. It's like, wow, why does Obama still go <clears throat> to that church with that preacher? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Why are you asking it me back? And then that's what happens for this block of time. So I think that that is the number one problem with all of it. There's and, no journalists. Yeah. And Emily Ratchet. <clears throat> Emily Ratchet, for whom I predict, by the way, a bright future. Um, <laughs> I was thinking how unsatirical it was. I can remember when Ronald Reagan had cancer in his bottom, if you remember this. Yes. Again, makes me feel old, but it was a while ago. There, he, there it was, and the things, steps had to be taken. You can't have a cancer lurking in the presidential rear end. So out it came. It was just around the time of his re-election, and the Los Angeles Times published an opinion poll. So you decide, do you think Ronald Reagan's bottom cancer, will A, return, B, has gone into remission, or C, has been completely cured? You decide. Right, you decide. This is interactive. Make your vote count on the president's ass. Yes, that's exactly. I thought, I, okay, I've lived to see it. Op opinion polling has now become a mockery of itself. Uh, that's exactly and it, right. It's all designed to make people think that they count, or can count, yeah. and neither assumption is correct. Right, and, and, I, and I think that that's right. I think that, um, you know, you guys give me a job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, since Liz won't take any responsibility, Ben, how take about you? Is it all your fault? I mean, you created Obama Girl. You know, there's, there are plenty cable news anchors out there that could have fulfilled that role. I mean, what was your plan? Um, originally, to get a cable news anchor to fulfill that role, and they all did <laughs> um, Then I was going to do it. I didn't look good in the outfit. No, I mean, you know, there was no grandmaster plan. I loved the idea because I was in the office and I heard some women talking about how this guy, they like him because of his policies, and the next one was talking about how cute he was. And at the time, I was watching a video by an artist uh, named JoJo, and she had this, like, ridiculous MTV video where she was fawning over this guy. So it wasn't, like, any kind of plan at the time. It was, wouldn't it be funny to have a girl who was obsessed with Barack Obama? And, um, you know, we actually put that video out a year ago today, and didn't think when we put out that video we'd still be releasing more Obama girl videos, let alone that Obama, you know, would have the nomination pretty much secured. But the um, the website that we launched, barelypolitical.com, has been evolving over the last year. And initially, when we put it out, I did not have you know a clear picture of what it would be today. But now I think we have a good idea of the type of things that work online. Citizen Sugar. Yes. You're using celebrities, Lindsay Lohan, that poor Britney Spears, to drag <laughs> him in and get him into politics. Well, I think so, yes. I think that um, entering into a political discussion via the celebrity realm is a really natural occurrence. And it doesn't mean that just because celebrities are the welcome mat that once they get inside, the political discourse is garbage. I think that people need sort of this stepping stone to get into it. And celebrity blogs, celebrity magazines have trained people to follow politics. I mean, we have learned how to create a cast of characters among people we don't really know, follow their every move, and I think that that translates to politics in a way that's an incredible parallel. So of course people are taking those skills and, and going to websites 12 times a day to see what has Obama done now. And, and if, if someone makes them laugh, it's another way to sort of learn about the candidate and interact with the candidate. And I think that it's a really happy marriage. Tunde, do you think that people are just looking something to, to connect to, to be part of a movement? I, yes, they are, and I, just to tag on to um, Citizen Sugar over here, the, the point about following celebrities is actually very important. I turned on TMZ, which now has a television show, which is really frightening. And they had a big glass wall like, uh, like the Nash Equilibrium wall where they're doing complex physics calculations. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's eating for lunch at the Ivy. And I'm like, how can they're following people minute by minute, and yet the news people aren't doing, treating the same given the same respect to like weapons of mass destruction or the Justice Department or all these other interesting things. So I think there is an, an opening there that you're tapping into, which is really interesting. But yeah, people want to be a part of a movement. People want to follow something. I think what we try to do with The Onion is do what we've always done, which is try to actually be America's finest news source. 
and do what we do politically and satirically, but journalistically at the core. Mm -hmm. We're writing in that journalistic voice and that journalistic style you see it in our videos, in the radio network, and playing off of the polling and the horse race mentality. We did this headline, it was um, Obama, Clinton, McCain combined to form nightmare ticket. <laughs> right, because there's all this hypothetical, like, let's just jam them all together. And the slogan was like, real change solutions you can believe in, finally for America you can trust. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, something, <laughs> something like that. Like, like Albert Brooks, you remember, in Taxi Driver? He's running the Senator Palantine campaign. He's on the phone. He said, you delivered us these buttons. Our slogan is, we are the people. The buttons say, we are the people. <laughs> I said, oh, you don't think there's much difference? Well, we won't pay for the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> we will throw the buttons away. But in fact, the joke is on him. There isn't any difference. Yeah. And that's probably the most intelligent slogan I've seen in the last 25 years. Well, I think you're all wrong. I think cable news is great, not just because I worked there for 25 years, but the truth is people learn a lot about politics that way, and it gives you guys plenty of fodder. Christopher, help me out here. Oh, my God. No, it's Well, like, go ahead and help her. <laughs> when, when Sandra Bullock in Miss Congeniality is told she's got to run for Miss America, <laughs> right? she, said, yes. she said, oh, no. She said, it's Mary Lou Freebush saying that she's in favor of world peace. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't you know that feeling? Why do I care? Why should I care what some celebrity thinks about it? Well, I don't know why candidates don't just start hanging out with celebrities. Like if Barack Obama was well, just they the Lindsay do, Lohan. But then no, I'm not. talking about the Lindsay Lohans who get the most press. Just be with them constantly. That's a great well, you know what? Twice the airtime. <laughs> exactly. Or just a, treatment centers. That like was I don't the story know. Today, just, right? That Obama was emailing with Scarlett Johansson, and Scarlett Johansson talked about getting the emails directly from him. But I'm not and, talking about Scarlett Johansson. I'm talking about Brittany, yeah. Lindsay. I'm different. talking about Brittany one tragedies. If you need a last name, you don't need to be on the list, right? I don't think right? that people. Um, um, that people care necessarily who celebrities are voting for, but I think that because celebrities are introduced in our lives as characters, as people we maybe know more about than our neighbors, I think we have an interest in who everyone is voting for. And we just happen to have Lindsay Lohan as sort of this character in our lives that maybe, you know, the girl next door isn't. So I don't think that we're taking our political cues from them, but I think that there's sort of a natural interest there. Let me bring it back to the election and ask Christopher this. But I want to bring it back to what you said about how great cable news is. Okay. <clears throat> because... It's going. I, I mean, I guess I just feel like when I'm getting information, and I don't know how all of you get your information, but I I can't remember the last well, let's time... Let's ask. Hold cable on. Cable news let's broke ask. a story. How many people <clears throat> watch cable news every day? And is that your primary source of where you get your information? No, wait a minute, hold on. On the moderator list, here's the second question. Uh -oh. The second question is, when a news... No, this is an important question for all of you. You should thank me for this. When a news story breaks, do you run to your TV? How many run to your TV? How many run to the Internet? How many run to the TV? How many run to the computer? Uh -huh. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Very interesting. It's right here. Go but ahead. You're Liz. not breaking the story, Good. Tammy. By the, way, the stories are breaking on the choice. internet. They're breaking from well all sorts of media. And then you guys slap a breaking news thing on it when it broke already. You know, when Anna Nicole Smith died, the news was no longer breaking. It broke. She's dead. That's it. <laughs> but it, and you went on and on. But like when I see, for example, your ex. Uh, uh, Chris Matthews, like this is my ex. Be clear, yeah. my ex host. That's it. <laughs> when I'm watching Chris Matthews, and I'm sure all of you saw on the internet or Chris Matthews, uh, he interviewed uh, a right wing kind of talk radio host, and they were talking about appeasement. And the right wing talk radio host didn't know what he was talking about, um, and so Chris Matthews beats up the guy. And then Chris Matthews goes on television and talks about how we beat up this guy. Now, I was watching the segment because I was actually myself, because I'm not a historical scholar, was sort of wanted to hear a conversation about appeasement and what it meant, why people were exaggerating about it, what Neville Chamberlain actually did. Instead, what I got was uh, a guy wasting my time, me not learning anything, and then Chris Matthews, the next day on the news, patting himself on the back for beating up a shithead. But wait Pardon a minute. Me. I'm not finished. <laughs> this isn't cable news. So the question is, why is it good that Chris Matthews' producers didn't book a smart guy, put a dumb guy on, and then let him blather on and on? I got nothing from it. The only person that gained something from it was Chris Matthews patting himself on the back. Well, let and me I find that offensive. Let me just defend him, though, because you're making two points at the same time. You can't do that. Because you want authenticity. You want people to be real. Chris Matthews is real. That's why he's successful. He says what he thinks. You may not like it. You may not like the way. The guest came on the show. He was a surrogate for the campaign. I wasn't there then. I had nothing to do with it. He wasn't a surrogate for the campaign. He was a talk oh, show what? host. He was a surrogate. What she's, saying, what she's saying, though, is important, that 
that the whole cable TV business can be very upsetting for anyone who has any self-respect. I mean, <laughs> I, I, this is getting I was, worse going, for I was my going, team. no, I was going to, I watch cable TV only when they can make me do it, which is at the airport, where I can't not watch it. So I got to the airport because I was going to New York for CNN. They'd asked me on to discuss a very serious subject. I won't bore you with what it was. But I got to, the, I got to, to National Airport, I was about to board the plane, and the headline didn't say fat slut dies, but it could as well have done so. The Nicole Smith right. fact had checked out. Right. Thought, it's cruel of me to take the ticket now and the hotel room, because I'm not going on TV tonight. I know that now. Mm -hmm. I should really call and say I'm not boarding the plane. And I thought, no, screw that. I could use a night in New York at someone else's expense. <laughs> <laughs> I won't call them until I get off the plane at the other end. And they said, uh, oh, great, so they're in the car, yeah. Well, you know, um, you're not coming on. I said, I, I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to the Essex House and I'm going to order a very big dinner. But they said, unless, of course, you'd like to talk about Anna Nichols. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they run the risk of wearing out your patience. With right. This kind. And I think, you know, no one's saying Chris Matthews isn't a nice guy or a smart guy, but at some point, whose responsibility is it <clears throat> when there's guests that are on who have not been pre interviewed? Clearly, because Chris Matthews, as a smart guy, because he challenged him on it, didn't, the guy was not there and was not smart on the issue, and all Chris did was beat him up, instead of somebody getting a smart guy on the show. Claire Tindy, help me out here. I'm not going to do that, Tammy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think, I think I can add another kind of example to this and why people turn to the pop cultural, the satirical side for some of this coverage. I mean, all of us up here represent some element of that. It's because there's something lacking in some of the mainstream outlets. You know, I saw a CNN segment, I was actually part of a CNN segment, they were talking about Petraeus' testimony. And they spent maybe two and a half minutes on Petraeus' testimony, about five minutes on campaign slogans and, and the font choices and the color. And this is the day <laughs> You have 24 hours, my friend. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot but of that time. Relative, but that relative, that decision of twice as much time on logos and color says something to the public. And it says something that I think we at The Onion are very proud to say, which is we absolutely don't respect our readers. Oh. But we can say that <laughs> and be open about it. I think there's a message that you get as the viewer or the reader from one of those other outlets of absolute disdain. And it's something that we can kind of have fun with, but there's something underneath of that which also happens. And it fills the void, I think, too, is you know, when you see Chris on Bill Maher <clears throat> and you see real debate in real conversations, because you can't craft a joke unless you have some information. And so people are making a point with information. You might disagree with the point, but it does spark conversation. It does spark dialogue. But his show went off ABC, and he's on HBO, a premium channel. I mean, why is it that he can't be on, or anyone like Bill Maher, be on a network? We've been talking about cable, but let's talk about a network. That was a network show. There was serious opinion issues. People talked about the show, but he's off. I mean, I'm not talking about the political issue, but there's a reason, because the American people want reality. They want to see things act out. That gets back to my question for Christopher, because it, people have posed this well, issue. Never ask. Yes. <laughs> the issue and the question is the Clinton campaign. And I, I'm, by the way, I'm wearing Hillary Clinton yellow for you. The, the question is, did uh, user gen videos that were just regular people, they were very slick, very highly produced. Someone said to me, made for TV movies. Do you think that helped the, or hurt the campaign? I don't know why they call it YouTube, but all I know about YouTube is that anyone who wants to see me make an old speech again that I did very well at the University of Chicago say, well, uh, can go and do that and be induced to buy my book. It's a MeTube. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys at all, I, but I like this MeTube innovation, I've got to say. Um, it's not the only thing the Clinton campaign screwed up. I think the main thing that they screwed up, and I really, really rejoice in saying this, is that uh, the person they thought was their secret weapon, the great campaigner, the great political genius, the great ex-president, revealed to a crucial number of people something that most of us already knew, which is that he's a raging psycho. <laughs> and it's been very gratifying to see people who could have caught up to that 10 or so years ago ca catching up to it now. When they think if there was one if there was only one reason why they lost, it'll have to be because of him. And that pleases me more than I can say. I feel as if I'm going to have an orgasm in my trousers. Do you think that... <laughs> Not while I'm sitting next to you. I do. I've waited a long time for this. Do you think that part of that was on purpose? And do how shocked they are, too. Yeah, sorry. Do you, do you think that Bill Clinton's perhaps lackluster performance was to... 
was there any strategy behind Boulou, it? Boulou, as they say in French. I mean, in other words, subconsciously he wanted her to lose. Do you think no, so? No, I don't think so because it, it would mean that he was in a, some awful way back. Um, and I think he can't deny himself a thing like that. Even I don't if it even think her. it was lackluster. I it, think it was He can't help himself else. anyway. Sorry. So the lackluster it wasn't, it was... Right. It was ugly, it was nasty. It, it was mean. it. It was, yeah, it was very much, there was well, a lot but of it, going What it on. was, was there was a camera following them everywhere, following every candidate everywhere, and every person. I actually want to ask another question about that, since we're getting so serious, about the uh, blogger, the citizen blogger. Maybe I should ask Citizen Sugar this. <laughs> the citizen blogger at um, HuffPost, who is the one that asked the questions of uh, President Clinton in his angry response to an, uh, the Todd Purdom's article in Vanity in Fair. Vanity. Should she have identified herself? I'm going to ask everyone on the panel. I'll start with you. Oh, interesting. Um, well, I think that the perhaps is going to be my answer because um, everyone has been empowered by the internet to sort of be a journalist. And we need to start acting as though everyone around us is a journalist because we all have the capability of publishing. We all have the capability of you know, being in a fundraiser and putting up the Obama bitter comment. It's going to happen. So I think that maybe those rules and mores of the traditional media don't apply as much, that we need to have a sort of base understanding that everything we say is public. Fair Tunde. I, uh, I tend to agree that that's the reality. I think there's a cost and a benefit to that. And we're in a, an, an awkward transition to the future. We, we know what the future is. The future is everything's live, online, all the time, minority report type of situation. We have access to anything you want in any form. The politicians are now feeling the brunt of that. So everyone is a reporter, and they're trying to adjust. And the public is trying to adjust. So what happens now, everything shocks us. Oh my god, Obama said bitter. Oh my god, McCain smiled. Like, oh my god. <laughs> are these larger than life appearances they won't shock us anymore when that's every day. It shocked us to see the president on television. It shocked us to make a phone call across the globe. But now those are all normal behavior. So I think the, the reality that is live streaming of everything is going to become more right. normal. And those communications people who were up here earlier are going to adapt their game to adjust to that sort of new but reality. But Ben, what I think that's is different, right. it's the fact that, that this computer is sitting on your desk. It's not a TV across from you. You have your feet up. You got the kids running around. The dog. There's 20 things in the way, no matter how big your screen is, right? But when they're when you're looking at someone having a meltdown, and they're on your computer and they're four inches, it feels different, doesn't it? It definitely does. I mean, really, to answer that question in the previous one, you know, typically online, something has to have a lot of shock value to really become part of the conversation, which is the reason why candidates advertising, which is typically so slick and manufactured isn't going to pop on YouTube because what is it? I'm saying I'm for change and babies in the U.S. And, you know, for us, a lot of what we're trying to do is figure out ways to add something shocking in it. So the question about, you know, should she have identified herself? Well, should she have ethically? I'm not really sure. I'm not from the journalism world. But should she have if she wanted to make a name for herself? That does work because had she identified herself, her answer would have, you know, his answer would have been, I think what she did was inappropriate, but understand this, as opposed to, you know, calling her. That's not what Christopher said. He said he'd go crazy anyway, right? Yeah. He, well, you know, he, he's not. Saying, the, 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 <clears throat> Mr. Clinton isn't very tightly wrapped, and he's full of uh, hatred and loathing and unreason, and <laughs> he can't contain himself anymore. And it's become very clear. Yeah. Uh, and, but Clinton, uh, and anything said to a voter at a public campaign rally is said, for the record, by definition. I, he, I, he wasn't I agree. trapped he into doing anything. Are we talking, about, was... uns, are we talking about Obama with, the, <clears throat> with Fowler walking, going, being at the Obama private campaign? Or are you talking about the... Well, we were talking about both. The comments okay. at the private campaign. No, I, I, so I better break this to you now. Confused. We've been doing Clinton for all this time. No, 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 no. But <laughs> and by the way, this is the <clears throat> Google National Journal panel. Oh, my God. I, uh, go. <laughs> I thought I was going to be stripping in a minute. Okay, no. let's... Let me no. just, just to finish no, that. No, but... but wait, okay. Because there was two we, things We lumped going it all on. together. We lumped it all together. We lumped it all together. This was the, the lady with That's the... That's what I thought. Breaking news. Into the idea. Breaking news. That's, That's what I thought. The I was idea like... that everything is public and live all Same the time. Same as Thank when you. Dick Cheney doesn't know the mic is on. Right. And calls my friend Adam Kleinberg an asshole and so on. And he doesn't realize it's going to be... Too exactly. bad. Tough. But don't we want them to be real? I mean, <clears throat> is it, right. isn't the whole point to learn who these people are? Wouldn't we rather learn who they are via this sort of medium than learn who they are via their slickly produced yes. ad and a list of bullet points on their website? I don't think we've adjusted to seeing that <clears throat> side of a candidate. We still expect them 
to be superhuman and super intelligent and super articulate every single moment. And no one is. But as a voters, we expect that of our candidates, even though we know we can't do it ourselves, they're not us. They have more money, they have more education, they've got more training and management. So I think we're all due for a big bubble but, popping uh -huh. when we realize that, hey, their farts smell too. Yeah. But what you said earlier was very good also. As, as this happens more and more and you see things like uh, the president uh, pulling at a door that doesn't open you know, in Moscow, right. things like, right. people will also allow more for it. Yeah. It'll be, it will be less surprising. Yeah. And it won't, be, it won't look so brilliant to get it on the air either. So and that's there great. is a natural compass yeah. that uh, corrects we, just have, we have to cross that chasm yeah. of awkwardness. But 7 million people watched <coughs> all 37 minutes of Obama's race speech right. on YouTube. Now, that's, there's plenty of other media outlets where it was watched. 7 million people did that, Liz. I don't know about you, but I'd kill for that audience any night of the week. Right. I mean, I think that... Uh, and ask any one of them if they can quote two words from it. No. Well, ask anyone if they did it at work. Well, ask anyone here. How many did it at work? No, no. My, okay, then. Ask anyone who didn't even watch all of it, watch some of it, if you can remember a single phrase from it. Who's got a phrase? Racist grammar. Right here. <laughs> Racist grammar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> apart, from, apart from his Grammy. Right. Um, I, say, I mean, there's a strategy behind how they got it. And people said it was the Gettysburg them. Address. There's not a single memorable phrase in it at all, well, except well, for jumping on grammar. That's... <laughs> Anyway, was the Gettysburg it? Address memorable immediately? Yes. I mean, did those people who were there that day know that it was going to be what it was? <laughs> they blogged it right after. Yeah, they yeah. had to. Yeah. <laughs> it's the official <laughs> blog archive. Yes, there was yeah. a there was a fight over the uh, piece figuring of paper out what four score was. Back of the envelope on which it was written, and uh, and but I think it was it was recommended partly because the the opening speaker, the curtain raising speaker, spoke for three hours. So the economy of the Gettysburg Address, <laughs> in comparison, re uh, recommended itself. So have a good warm-up act, I think. Go ahead. But the no, passage of gonna... time isn't going to make people remember a word Obama said in Philadelphia. What One of the most boring speeches ever the, made. Then why did yeah, all those people watch because it? Because they want it to be true. Because they, they want to be part of it. Well, look, this is a guy who can make a speech accepting the nomination, or claiming it, rather, saying, this will be the moment people will look back on as the time the oceans stop rising. So just by getting the delegate count, He's arrested <laughs> the climate crisis. I mean, and no one thinks it's funny, except me. This is a megalomaniac <laughs> narcissist. Oh yeah, probably now the sea will stop rising. Yeah, that, that'll do it. Yeah. Someone from um, South like Dakota it. just cast their super delegate. But. I think there's an assumption that seven million Crazy. people saw it, so that you know, then it must be viral and everybody's watching it. But you're discounting the strategy that, that the Obama team has, that they email it to a million and a half people, that they put it front and center on their homepage. And so then on YouTube, within eight hours, it's on YouTube's homepage. And then everybody sees Obama's race speech. And something that might not have been sent around otherwise suddenly is the big quote unquote viral video of the day. But this idea of viral as it used to exist of this is hot, send it to all your friends, is actually almost negligible now. That, that rarely, rarely happens. Sometimes Huck will be able to, you know, do an ad with Chuck Norris and it's you know, so bizarre that it actually you know, crosses over. And that, to me, is a really interesting Give dynamic. Give me Mary Lou right Freebush any time over him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the interesting dynamic, is that like, the, the candidates who were on the fringe, like Mike Ravel uh, you know, and Ron Paul, were doing these really interesting things online because they were willing to take these chances. And the candidates like Clinton and, and Obama, even when they tried to do something that was a little bit different, you could tell it went through like 15 filters before it actually hit YouTube. And, and that's why you know, it didn't do that much. And part of the reason that Crush on Obama has you know, 50 million online views is because it didn't have all those committees along the way figuring out, let's make sure we don't offend anybody along the way. So you're saying committees are wrong too. Let's see, cable news networks are bad, committees are wrong. What have, we haven't talked about Senator McCain and the Republicans today, and we really should. What about their presence on the web and what's happening in the culture? Baratunde, you're right in there, because you're more honest than CNN, go. Well, here's the, the fun part, and again, I'll take it back to the journalism of The Onion, is that while Obama and um, Clinton were doing this horse race dance and the networks and everyone was obsessed with that, we had a good time being able to talk about McCain. I, I, you know, we don't like to deconstruct what we do there, so I won't go too much behind, but I think you see a lot of the themes about McCain that are out there, and we've had an opportunity to, to take that on 
while everyone else is focused on this side of the room. And just to back him up, we did run that video with the headline, The Onion is the only one talking about McCain right now, because it was in the midst of the Democratic fight, and they were the only ones who were coming out and saying these kinds of things. And I think in order to lampoon a subject as well as you guys do, you have to really know it. You can't be funny without the knowledge, and you also can't get the joke without doing your homework. Right. Do you feel like you're in competition with Colbert or Jon Stewart along the way? How do you guys do it? That's, like, that's a really good question. We get that all the time, and the short answer is no. We're kind of comedy cousins because we're doing something different. They're really in that daily news cycle of, like, this happened five minutes ago. Here's our response. And we have a slightly longer arc to that. So it's, a different, it's on a different spectrum of kind of the, the satire and news game. And what we try to do is write things that will last 10 or even 20 years down the line but be tied into... Like Hitchens' video still on YouTube, there right? There you go. But I think also tied, into, this, uh, tied into the zeitgeist enough that it'll actually, A, you might predict something. Like we ran Bill Clinton, screw it, I'm running for president. Mm -hmm. And right the week of South Carolina, though it was written before that, it just, you could feel it happening. And so something like that will last for a while. And when George W. Bush took yeah, office, I say it in Liz's, uh, say it in Liz's uh, presence, and I ask forgiveness, but there are some shows that I think now pe people laugh because to show they get the joke, not because it's funny. Yes. They say, they so that it, all John Stewart has to do is say, Bush is IQ and make a face that everyone knows to laugh. Because that must be funny, right? But the, a joke has not in fact been made. No information is, has been produced, no, uh, Why no, no background, no backstory is required. It's a laugh line. They might as well have a laugh track as do that. Um, well, I'm not there anymore, so I'm not going to have a comment. But there is a term called clactor which I think is real. And it's when people hear something, it's exactly what you're saying, and they go, and they clap like seals. And it doesn't evoke la out loud laughter, hilarity, like some of the tapes we've seen. But it, there's a recognition of you understand the hypocrisy uh -huh. you're being shown. Yeah. Um, but there also is the Clip thing, to. and I feel what Chris is saying is an important thing, because it, what, exactly what you're talking about separates really good satire, doing the homework, and pointing out something um, satirically, or just saying, Look, isn't Bush stupid? Right. I mean, and, and that's boring to that's me. I, I try never to do that. I, I think that it's not interesting, and I think it's that's a late night comic monologue from the bigger shows. It's a Pavlovian cue. It just yes. says. Yeah. Is there a different laugh. rhythm to a political joke than a regular joke? A good one? A, a good one? A good some, one. I think a good political joke tries to, uh, you know, say something funny instead of saying, McCain's old, Reagan's old, you know, I just, you know, Hillary's whatever, you know. What, yeah, what, what, what? what, 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 what it's not many people say that are very, not very about her policy. You'll feel better, does. you'll feel better if you yeah. just say. I'm not saying. But I think the other thing on any, say, on any joke, and maybe I'll even, I'll carefully differ with my hero over here and say that any good joke, whether it's political or relationship, is they have a lot of things in common. You know, they're communicating something. Yeah, they have new, to be at someone's expense. They have a different premise. They have to be at someone's expense. Humor multiple. is always at someone's expense. <laughs> but <laughs> humor does expense. serve a really important purpose yes. in this campaign in that it will let people have discussions about things that they wouldn't necessarily. You're not going to go to mother-in-law and talk about abortion rights, but you might go and talk about what was on The Daily Show last night. Right. Or a hilarious joke about abortion rights. Right. Which I would that's like. That's the best of both. <laughs> <laughs> but, but new media political satire I do think is different, and that's, to me, what's really exciting about it is obviously satire has been around forever and political cartoons, you know, hundreds of years ago up to Saturday Night Live and everything now. But with new media, a couple things I'm noticing. One, there's this like conversation around everything as soon as it happens. You put a video on YouTube and there's 10,000 comments and they're talking about the New York Times. So that kind of like interaction with the user is really exciting to me. The other thing that I'm finding with our videos, and it's almost the opposite of the clapter where it's like, oh, if John Stewart said it and it's about Bush, it's got to be funny. You know, a lot of our videos are embedded in blogs. People have no idea that we did it. They have no idea what to expect. And a lot of times the blogs that put them up there don't even tip off what the joke is. Like that Hillary and Bosnia thing, most of the times the blogs talked about it, they would actually just say, oh, guess what? Hillary actually wasn't lying and just put the video there. So they got to kind of be in on the joke to a degree and they weren't, you know, tipping it off like Jay Leno or Letterman might on a late night bit and say, hey, here's Hillary and Bosnia and you know exactly what's coming. So By the way, on cable news, we never fake that kind of stuff. Oh, we I say know, when it's a I joke. Know, but <laughs> if anyone has a question, if you dare take this panel on, please step over to the microphone and we'll get to you. So if you want to get start moseying over there now, please feel free to do so. Brave souls out there. Are you a brave soul? Yes. 
Bring All right, it on. get over there. Go ahead, line it up, my friend, and we'll bring be ready it, to go. Bring, bring it, it on. on. <laughs> Will we ever stop hearing that phrase, by the way? He apologized for it again today mm -hmm. in, in Europe. And the first time he apologized for it, he said it was Laura who told him that was a terrible thing you just said. His wife told yeah, him? Yeah, it, it, she's. It, it's interesting how much influence she has. Sir, right. give us your name, where you're from, <laughs> who you're with, and who your question's for. Well, uh, I, my name is Tony Cerise, and due to the nature of the question, I'll plead the fifth on who I'm with because it has nothing to do with where I'm from. But I used to, I used to be in radio with a Clear Channel radio station uh, group in, out in Montana, and it was in, uh, I can't remember if it was the summer of 2000 or 2001, but it, every single news network was talking shark attacks all <laughs> summer long. <clears throat> and the total number of shark attacks that summer had been six with <laughs> something like two fatalities. How many in Montana? None. <laughs> <laughs> but what, was, what, was, what, we had, what we had dug up is we had found that actually up to that point that year, there had been seven deaths, seven deaths by, of people who had been crushed by vending machines. <laughs> because they, they, their candy bar didn't come out, so they start shaking that thing and it falls over on them and, and, and they're done. Are you with Baratunde? What's that? Are you with Baratunde? Is no, this no. real? Oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I'm just wondering what, uh, you know, what, what the mentality is maybe in, 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 in our news media today that just preys on that, on that, on that fear factor and, and, and how they all do it kind of in synchronicity. Uh, I, love it. I love it on The Daily Show now when something comes up and they immediately cut to a montage of every single news network Mm -hmm. talking about the exact same thing, using the exact same talking points, bullet points, and then they complain about being fed these bullet points that they're going to use. Yeah. And so yeah. how, do, how do we get away from that, or can we get away from it? Blondes in peril are sexy. <laughs> you get a blonde in peril, you can milk that thing for a whole Wild cycle animals. and a half. <laughs> most, scary, most scary words on TV, breaking news. Yes. Uh -huh. All they have to do is point the camera at some disaster. There's no work. No research, no thought. It's breaking news. But not even a disaster. Uh, there are there are no there is no school shooting problem in America. There isn't one really. And if, if the, to say there is, it's been going down all the time. The the abducted children on milk cartons fictional. Satanic child abuse fictional, but always works and requires no thought, no effort. It's just that a lot of innocent people get arrested for crimes that they haven't committed. But to your specific and question, it's our fault. to your specific question, again defending cable news. <laughs> <laughs> like they need to be defended, but um, there's no pictures of people getting crushed by the vending machines. Well, I didn't and see anybody getting pictures. bit by a shark either. Oh, we can fix, we can, we can fix that. I saw pictures of the beach. People are not, I'm sorry. I'm sure, I'm, there's surveillance <laughs> camera footage. Yeah. There's there are surveillance are camera footage. footage and there are the helicopters who travel around the sea and people are mesmerized. How many people have been mesmerized by a helicopter going around and around, watching it on TV, waiting for something to happen? Because there's nothing else on TV. But Terry, so what the channel? But what you're saying? Because the other channel has the same message. By cable, by cable. How about satellite? I'll give you a couple of brochures. Oh, I would change the channel. Yeah. I actually would watch someone pulling a vending machine out. Of, of, <laughs> but what? But I don't know. People, the, people watch the guy the trapped shark in the elevator. Stuff. I mean, that's kind of the I'm same thing. I'm not so sure about the shark attacks. That's over too quickly, I always. And, and yeah. you can't, you can't you know, say change. The, it's over too fast. Changing they the channel. They die quickly. He set it up. That was a really good question. Yeah. It's on every it's channel. It's on every channel. It's like, on I was not, every... I do politics. I don't do sharks. I'm sorry. Oh, I was okay. part so of that trend. No I was defense. there for the trend, You're though, I must say. You're going to sidestep this one? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm not defending. <laughs> Thank question, you. Okay, dude. who's next? Nice Who has try. a question? Who is brave? Who is brave? I want to, wow, someone gathers their courage. Please, go ahead, walk over. Now. Here's my question. Well, let's go to her first, but think about this, ladies and gentlemen. This fall campaign, this campaign has been dominated by new media. You start thinking about, so you can tell the audience, what's going to happen this fall that's new that we should look out for? Hi there. Go ahead. Hi there. I had a quick question. It's but you didn't say who you were yet. Oh, my name is Sarah, and I work at ABC News. Um, oh, so ABC it's, News. <laughs> ABC but I'm, I'm in the um, dot-com digital portion as well. So, oh, But dot it's, com. it's a question mm. that we have that my friends and I have been talking about in and outside the office. And the question is, what are the perils when candidates kind of reach a rock star celebrity status? Because I think one of the things that we love about celebrities today is that we love to watch their rise, but we also love to watch them fall. And what are the parallels of that and what happens when, you know, Bon Jovi or Britney rises and falls? I mean, Britney's not taking away your health care or giving you health care. So how, do that, how does that parallel at all? And 
Well, what's the is fall that, that the media is going to focus on? You know, I mean, I guess I would ask uh, so often, you know, I wasn't at the Howard Dean defining moment screaming, but you talked You to could people. have watched it on cable. I did, over and over, thanks to you. You're welcome. Um, and, but those who were in the room said that it didn't seem as big as life as the way the media portrayed it. I don't know what It's there. like reliving Richard Nixon's debate. Come on, get in the modern media, get a TV, look at it. I mean, come but, on. But, yeah, but you know what? There's a difference between. Yeah. But that's the whole thing. And it's that, politics. It's about media. It's how you appear on TV. It's okay, not so, how you so are. Okay, so anyone messes up, it's defined by the media as a giant mess up, and that's the fall. The bottom line is, you shouldn't fall in love with politicians. Well, They're politicians, how, yeah. no matter what they are. You it depends on how much you have in the bank. Politicians. You know, it's like how much you built, like how much um, sort of public leeway you've kind of banked up. You know, how much it's the, the fourth heart attack. It's like how much are people willing to forgive before it sort of changes what it means and, and how people are going to respond to it. Christopher. Well, it's a matter of whether you want charisma in a politician or not, or whether it should be just what the Constitution says it is. Uh, any citizen can do it. You need only average integrity. You, you pick up the garbage, you defend the frontiers of the country, you take care <laughs> that the laws are faithfully executed, and you don't try and be a star of any other kind. That, that should be nice. That would be, but people think, no, I want, I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. I, I want a politician who I can adore, or who loves me or cares about me. Um, and that's, that can be very dangerous, because that's the origin of demagogy, which is the origin of totalitarianism. It means some, someone is going to one day promise you a lot, a great deal, um, in, in exchange for something rather sinister. I think, there's, oh, sorry. No, I, just saying, I think there's something very frightening about somebody who actually would like jobs like that anyway, because it, it goes very much to your point, where it's like they've, they've sat down, they've looked at themselves, and they've said, do you know what's wrong with the world? I'm not in charge. And that's <laughs> fatally yes. bizarre. So wait a minute. You don't like the cable networks, right? You don't like the web videos, and now you're blaming the candidates what themselves? What web videos don't I like? I don't know. Ben. Wait, no, you just, you know. <laughs> no, you don't minute. like, you Wait don't like minute. sharks. You don't like sharks. I didn't say, I said I didn't, okay, first you of all. You didn't like Hillary's this videos. This is what's wrong with cable news. She's Bending. saying three you didn't things like the, I didn't say, the citizen and then you're blogger. yelling over me. Are you trying, what are you saying? That's are you exactly saying, what's happening. Is are that you not saying, what's happening? Can I hear, yes? Ding, 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 you're ding, ding. You're turning against me? <laughs> you were turning against your moderator and host, Baratunde, please, come back to me. I'll just, what I will do is I'll take it back to your question. I'll take it back to <laughs> Which is, you know, you, you see it happening already. I mean, A, to be successful, we built a, a, a culture, I'm going to be a little serious, I'm sorry, where like celebrity gets you places. And we like that. And we like that they're distant from us and that they're special and they eat places we could never afford and vacation in places we could never get to. But we also love when they OD and have a thousand kids out of wedlock and crash their cars driving cocaine, you know, with cocaine spilling in their laps. So this will happen. Like the, the beautiful thing is that you can guarantee and you already saw it. The Reverend Wright thing was a great like test run for Obama because there was a lot of like positive stuff. And then all of a sudden it was like, "Do you love America? Why aren't you wearing your flag? Are you really a Muslim? Like where'd that come from? I thought he was like the super Jesus guy, and now <laughs> like you're questioning if he's American. Yeah. So that it'll keep coming back around. We we push him up, we bring him down. And uh, questioning if he's a Muslim not after the preacher problem. <laughs> yeah, which is not in that case. Not in that case. Not in that case. He had everyone lining up to suck on him, and he had to do that. He brought it all on himself. None of that was imposed upon him. Reverend Wright. He decided to go to that church. He got married there. He had his children baptized there. He gave money to that thug. But he stepped away, too. It, all of it, and, and, when he, and when he was asked to announce it, he said, well, it seems like the guy doesn't care enough about my campaign, so I'll disown him. No, none of this was done by us to him. Everyone in the press wished it hadn't happened. They still do. That... Mm. They still do, and, I they think, still, and that's, well, why, that's it, why the unquotable, forgettable, nothing Philadelphia speech is still considered to be one of the greatest addresses by any politician ever made. And so, no one here <laughs> has yet quoted a, a, two words from it. I, I just wanted to add... Nor will, they, nor will they ever. We're wrapping up. Go ahead, Ben. No, I just want to say it seems like it, it kind of ties into the political satire thing that a lot of times people like to find one thing to hone in on the candidate, and that's their thing. And I remember reading that Clinton, they actually really liked that, that he ate a lot of fries was the thing that people picked on because people weren't going to not vote for him for that. But the Al Gore being boring or the Hillary Clinton being controlling or felt like it was inevitable, you know, when, when political satire kind of like hones in on one subject about a, pers about a person, I feel like sometimes that is what kind of starts what you're saying, the backlash. And then all of a sudden, and I talked to one comedian who was saying that they don't know, you know what, what's going to be the thing that people make fun of about Obama. I don't really know if I've seen it yet, 
But that, you know, part of the thing I think we were making fun of in the Crush on Obama video was this idea of him as kind of a pop star. But I, there's going to be plenty. He's a pol again. No, no, he's there a will politician. be. But, but my point is, I guess it seems like all of a sudden, like I didn't know Al Gore was boring until all of a sudden Saturday Night Live started hitting that over the head, and all of a sudden it's like. I guess he's boring. And, you know, you asked the question before wooden, about... Wooden, wooden, you remember wooden? Yeah, wooden. wooden. Yeah, wooden. Everything was and, wooden. And, um, you know, you asked the question before about, like, do we view the wood guys could be as good. Uh, competitors? I mean, I, for me, when we create videos, I think we're like, this would be amazing if The Onion, The Daily Show, somebody there saw it and liked it. Like, it's, it's the opposite on our end. We're, we just started a year ago, but I'm, like, honored to be on the stage with this group. And for, to a degree, I think part of that reason is I never felt like The Daily Show or The Onion like pigeonholed one person and then just beat him over the head for that no, one thing. We didn't. Yeah. And they and they found like that day's story and found something really ori original and innovative about that story to key in on. And I, I always had so much respect for that. And that's what I hope, you know, we can do a little bit. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, and I hope that in doing that and doing the new project I'm doing now, to me, political satire, um, it's just, it's, we're, it's, we have a different mindset than the onion. and you guys are amazing. I, I just rely on urgency. I really like to be able to, See that something happens. Breaking news. Yeah. Do it. Yes. Breaking. Yes. All the bells and whistles. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. I it's very well said. Like watching. On, like on. watching uh, arteries harden. Like Artery, yeah. Arteries. Like watching arteries harden. <laughs> right. on, on the on the urgency thing, it is. We've talked a little bit backstage about this. We have a different challenge at the end, but we we're sliding up that scale. We did a, a breaking news mobile text alert when Hillary dropped out. And say, you know, Senator Hillary Clinton has uh, ended a bid for president despite having won already in February 2007, <laughs> right? And that goes out to a whole bunch of people. And we have other things that are kind of, you know, newspapers write obits well before people die, mm -hmm. right, just to have them on file. So there's certain things there. And we're, we're, with the website and with doing things online, we're also adding new things. We have a Google map. We're actually at Google. And uh, you know, plotting the campaign stops. You should really make a journalism handbook so everyone here could follow <laughs> yeah. all your policies. I want to thank everyone on the panel, if you'll help me. Thank you. Great job. And next time, we'll tell you all about the future of the internet, right?